One of the few times that Swami Vishnu Devananda talked about himself and Master Shivananda in great detail. Hari Om Tat Sat. After reading, I thought that actually visualizing the whole event in a dream, what has passed, went for me. The day I spent with him is look like a dream now, but it is real. I remember he told once I was about after six months of my stay in the ocean, I used to assist uh, to arrange the evening section where we did by putting the picture and uh, the light there the in front of the land is on the veranda of the master. And that the master was very small, there in the boat. Not many disciples, not many visitors. So they could all sit on the banks of the Ganges on the veranda of the master where he used to sleep. The very veranda is now still we keep it as whole. There are also not many, about 20, 30 people will be there, it will be visitors and the disciples. And uh, one day after the evening meditation and the prayer meeting, he casually remarked and with me several things and he looked at me and told one day he had to go to America. He was only 18 and I never heard much about my geography was very poor. I didn't like geography, not history in my school life. I heard about America a little bit. Uh, not I used to read newspapers at that time, so I don't know much about what politics what world is. So I thought that just another type of masters, maybe sometimes he makes jokes, and now I can see. When I look back, when we close that day, my karma is somehow destined here in this continent, and he foresee that I have to come and work up and build up an institution in his name. In fact, all my life, in a way, is inspired towards his mission, whether I like it or not, I go back into my life all the way back, I see everything is prepared. First, in the high school, I remember uh, we had to take some subject, uh, the different subjects, and uh, Two subjects we have to take compulsory, and they give me options even uh, physics, mathematics, physiology, chemistry, and then accounting and botany, chemistry, and different type of subjects. The two subjects we have to take. I took physiology and chemistry as my subject. My cousin laughed at the over about the whole thing. He asked me, am I going to be a doctor? What's the purpose of taking the subject? I said, I don't know. Now I remember now when I look back, again that helped me a lot in understanding some of the scientific truth about matter, about mind, about God. That was necessary. Maybe the whole thing when I direct it now I can see what I'm teaching. Master's first teaching was he emphasized physical health. He started with journal. So unbeatingly without even knowing 
that Chandan could work there to go into that line. And eventually it turns everything to spiritual. And after finishing my studies in high school, uh, my early life was very, very difficult, very tough. I had to go to school for my home. For four and a half miles I had to walk. For four and a half miles I had to go back. Eight and nine miles every day I had to walk. And then the difficult part was I had to carry books, lunch, and more. It was too much, so sometimes I had to skip carrying lunch. Sometimes I had to simple in the rainy season, you had to simple in the rainy season. Uh, streams is everywhere you see. Monsoon is, is beyond your imagination in our country. We got no winter where I come from. But we got terrible monsoon. It pours, it pours. Every field, every street, everything can become a waterway in that time. So first thing we had to learn is how to swim. And the older students, we always go, go, go in group, not alone. It's very difficult to walk first of all for a lot of alone. So the paddy fields and forests and, and rivers and riverlets. Second thing is, company is very important and the older students who, who are more age, in, uh, older to our age, they have become ones to cross the rivers, to cross the streams. So they learn from the very beginning a kind of unity among children to help each other. By the time when we grew up and the young ones who are coming, we will be leading them across the streams and rivers, just like we have been led by the people who have gone ahead of us. So there is a life of intense, of intense affection among the students itself. And as soon as um, I finished my studies, uh, it was, um, I was 16 I finished my high school. That the intense desire, I don't know, was to leave home. I would like to continue my studies, mostly my tendency is what was scientific, and, uh, scientific nature, mostly electronics, engineering. This is in my blood, I used to play with a lot with the lens and chemistry, electricity. Uh, there is no electricity in our hometown, so I used to collect all the father's battery and make a long thing to connect to get enough electricity to to look into how the earth is done, what the water of school says how to create. So there's a telescope there, say they had to make a telescope, I steam bottles, all spectacles, and took all the leaves as well. A long uh, a telescope out that would be nice to put the cardboard and look into it, how it works. So I played a lot, and then um, mostly my line was in that. Temperaments were towards scientific investigation. But though I know that they have this university is too much, uh, too far away and to get an engineering education is very really hard in India, um, which is, it's too difficult. Uh, so many few students admitted, mostly the, at that time, the training was given to British rule. And the train was given only to bring up more clerks and office workers. But that's the thing that the time they needed. So we have little opportunity for scientific temperament students to get into any education at that time. So in I thought maybe the best thing is it was war. And joining in the Navy, I was able to get more knowledge on the subject. But I was underrated, and moreover, I have never seen more than 40 miles in my home. My parents were very strict, and my father was really disciplinarian. From the very childhood, he put me into 
I'm just disciplined. I must get up at six o'clock in the morning, wash myself, take a bath and study. According to the rule of India, Orthodox rule, early morning is the best time for studying as your mind is calm. So every child should get up in the morning and the parents insist they must take a wash and bath and then take their book and sit, sit and study. Yes, invariably, invariably see this. Then afternoon, just before supper, the whole family member should come, all orthodox families, they are coming from the veranda, the, the oldest person in the house, she will be the in charge, and she is like a queen in the house, she may be grandmother, she may be uh, uh, grand auntie, makes no difference, and the oldest person has got the respect. So she takes command and brings all the things and old everyone and then they sit together and they pray for half an hour before supper. And then uh, we retire. And of course we don't have electricity nor we have other creations. Mostly we use oil and land. So we have to retire very early. So my father used to sleep upstairs and I used to sleep with my auntie down. He goes very early to the uh, fields where he got with landowner and he walked all his life in the land. He has to go to the study education or the English education except basic uh, uh, language of, the, of his mother tongue. And uh, so he is very much devoted to his work and his life, his field and his cattle, his cows. So he gets at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning and then he finishes the washing. And you know, 6 o'clock the shop will come down and he'll go to the field. And he used to scold me if I didn't get back at the time. So I learned that art of Finding out when he wakes up. There's no alarm clock, there's no watch anywhere in our home. We always, when we go to school, we have to learn the position of the sun on the farm. And we need the shade of the tree or shade of certain thing. And by measuring the shade, it is a certain time. And we literally go to school by looking at the shades and the, and the, sometimes we measure our own shade, we learn to find out the time. We have to invent uh, our own way of finding the time. So also I invented this method at that time without even knowing unconsciously how to wake up before the father wakes up. So that he, I won't get his clothing. And this, so the moment he walks up, I'm up from my bed and on. So this became a habit for me. So I learned first discipline of getting up in the morning. And then afternoon, it doesn't matter where I go for playing or anything, I must back home at 6 o'clock to the room. I am not allowed to walk at 6. And so, early life was very a disciplined life, because I had to go to school. And um, now my parents will allow me to leave, though I finished my high school, still I am young, I am under their charge. But they said, come in the third day, I want to leave home. I don't know why. I want to learn more, I want to learn, and the best thing is joining the Navy. So I wrote to my cousin, who is in Bang, Bangalore, it's about 500 miles away, and I uh, asked him, will you please uh, help me? I want to come up to the house, if I come to you, you please get me a job, I will stay with you, so my parents will object as long as I am with you, they will object going away from my home, as you will be my wife. He wrote me back, I'll be very happy, you can come and stay with me. And uh, he has got his family, and but he said he's got a spare room, he can find a job and help me. So when I got the letter, I told my parents, you know, the best opportunity for me to get out now, they cannot refuse, because I've got a... Uh, written letter from my cousin that he will look after me. So with great difficulty, they gave me permission. 
that is only sunny, they don't want to leave it all, they want to take care of the family, lands, that's uh, their ideas, but I want to leave. And how they gave me permission as if I directly go and see my cousin and stay with him. So they gave me enough money to buy a ticket and just a few extra rupees spent on the way. And my idea was not to go to person or anyone, just to get out of the home and get the permission and get enough money. And my first opportunity, I never seen more than 14 miles. That is the nearest place I saw it fall apart about 40 miles. Uh, sometime I used to go with my father for cattle. Uh, he used to buy and I could walk with him. Beyond that, I never seen my world is only within 14 miles kilometers. The first time I'm going beyond 14 miles is the first opportunity. I got into the train. I came to the uh, the nearest first road putting office, which is 50 miles from my home, I heard about it. I got on from the train and directly walked into the recruiting office. And there, it happened to be a Saturday, so they said it's close, there will be no recruiting possible. When I had to wait two days, I still to Monday. And um, to make a short the story, I went up for uh, the public of medical examination and the new friend that said I had bad heart, underage, underage, every possible medical ailment they found in me. So I was disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> And now you can imagine that the first shock in my life. And uh, luckily, I, I did spend all the money. I was almost saving enough in case something happens, I must have enough money to reach my cousin. Because I didn't want to go back. So I was disheartened and every bit possible. Why it happened? I couldn't understand it. Therefore, we see everything we. The moment I, if I go anywhere wrong, you see everything is given to a situation. So I gave this up and came back to the railway station, got my ticket to Bangalore. There's no other alternative, I got nothing left, no exit for the money for the ticket. As I was standing there, again the destiny was not taking me to Bangalore. Suddenly comes this my first actual spiritual teacher, you can call me. A young man comes, he is about 19 years old, he must be about 18 years old, he is a few years older to me. He saw me as if he recognized me. Oh my friend, what happened? Oh, I saw you, but it could be not be. What happened? You have already been here. So I said I was disqualified medically, that's so why I'm going bad with it. And they asked him who are you and who he is. He said he is coming from Madras and then he is also on the recruiting office and somehow he didn't like it so he is going to Madras to join the army. And so uh, he was talking all about it. And by the time the train came, we had both had traveled the same train. And uh, at midnight, one o'clock, I had to change to another train to go to Bangalore to my cousin's place and this train will go directly to Madras. At, uh, and the way this, uh, we both got into the train and the uh, first time uh, meeting a stranger and the uh, boy knows more about the world than me and the understanding is very limited. So he are talked me into why don't we come with him to uh, Madras and there he can join the Army. I said, I can't. I don't have money for support to buy the ticket to Madras, nor I know anyone. I quite knew I, was, I must go back to my cousin now. I was getting bit afraid, also ashamed and disheartened. And then at one o'clock, I go to get down. This boy held my hand, no. Let's go to Madras. I will arrange everything for you. I'll buy the ticket and I'll pay the extra fare over the way. I don't know what happened to the stage. 
and it was with me. And next day I arrived and then that saw me keep on and I had difficulties to be the ticket collector and so forth. I skipped off that thing and then we came to the army office. We walked all the way. I don't care to go back home. It doesn't matter where I find. As long as I get a job, I don't want to go back home. And uh, the next day, medical examination comes, and uh, I have to upgrade again. But this day, everything was all right. My heart was sorted, age was sorted, everything was all right. This is one day everything changed. <laughs> so I joined the army in the engineering uh, uh, corps. They call it Royal Engineering Corps at the time. So somehow. The life was more horrible at that time. I didn't know that army was so terrible and so the tremendous discipline there. Early morning, get up and wash. And they only if the nurses say get up at six four o'clock. Then they kick you and make you up at six or four o'clock. And so it was really discipline at sixteen and half. It was too much. And how I took it, and then we had to learn the. Right, for such different, they had to teach you all the right and studies and this and that. And uh, by the time of the three months of the lesson, they put me, uh, they transferred us to a headquarters in North India. But this all happened in South India. Now we have to go through South and North India to call. And the people come up the six months of training in the headquarters when they come back. They tell about the this is nothing what we did, all the training and discipline what we get in our own area is nothing and there is a strange terrible climate is different food is different everything is different from north to south and we are we never know what cold is and there is extreme cold in the winter the hot weather is in 120 degrees in the shade sometimes you can get there and this is uh, all about the The disciplinary staff, uh, staff they call it, is to train the the young recruits and then educate groups and uh, we are educated people and we have to go on the training of these people. They used to scare us and out. The train came and we all hauled to the north in the two thousand miles, which takes a week's journey. Very slow trains. And um, at last we are in Punjab, that is the northwest uh, province of India, where now they divided the the West and East Bengal and West Bengal they call the Pakistan certain area, and Jalandhar is my first headquarters. And then again to cut short story that the training condition was very horrible, and at the end of the training. All the recruits will be dispatched to reinforcement battalion. This is called train battalion, and the other area we call our own headquarters, reinforcement battalion, where the battle is going on, especially the Middle East was raging. All the recruits are the train ones are taken to reinforcement battalion. That means any day, any night, any moment, you are off. You don't know where and which place. They they won't say anything. They just come and ask you to get into the car or a uh, lorry, and then dump you like in the cabin in the train, and then take you to the ship or ship you wherever they want. And no question asked. And they won't say where you are going. And then when you reach there somewhere, and uh, they will give some post box for you. So uh, it will be your address. So even the family members know are not allowed to know. Where you are, you may be Iran, Iraq, anywhere, Italy, uh, any point. So all my friends suddenly at the recruits on one night came and they called the whole call and took everyone out to the reinforcement battalion. And last name, they didn't call me a call. At last, they called my name and they said, "I'll be." Sent to the battle battalion, that is to keep the soldier quarters where all the records and the looking uh, after the the welfare of the people are gone overseas. And this place is very difficult. This post is very difficult. No one is allowed to stay in the battle battalion. They must work as 
I think about the year or six months experience in the battlefield before they can even get any force there, they rarely even that possible. But from the very beginning, they didn't even send reinforcement battalion, and I don't know why, and the name was Colin, and I was put permanently as a permanent staff there. At that time, I was just barely 17, one year of my training. Now you can see why, if I had gone to Iran, Iraq, and so forth, I wouldn't have met my master. The time was for my happy season. Everything is prearranged that. So also, if I had gone to Navy, I wouldn't be coming near Jalantar, which is not very far away from Bishri, because I would have gone to Bombay or some other place. I would have never opportunity to see. So anything if I had taken the wrong road, all this back into his mission. So the double battalion came, my friends are all gone to Iran, Iraq, and Italy, and um, my life became much easier now. There's all the way to look after things, and it's mostly all his work. And uh, so my karma became a little better now, and it's just, uh, more leisure. So the friends, the other kinds of friends came, he used to talk all of those nonsense every evening, and the other told him last time. Then one day, it arose, what is life? After one quarrel, next morning I found a small leaflet in my office, and that uh, opened my eyes. I want to see this man now. Who is this man? Who is this one, Sri Ramanda? A great difficulty I found my back in Austin, but I not known. Rishi Gates is almost a remote part of the world for me, and, um, and I want to get out two days day off on weekends from the camp. Generally, they don't give on weekends, we are allowed to go only to the city for four hours, not a special permit to leave the camp. And most of the uh, days, we are not allowed to leave the camp. So on Saturday or Sunday, they give four, four hours uh, a special permit to leave the camp within four hours. That's all maximum we are allowed to go. And now I'm asking two days off. All the way to go to Jal uh, to Rishi case, so I paid a small application to my uh, superior. And what happened, I don't know, he granted, which never does. So I just took off my two days off and went to Rishi case. First time, first time I saw Haridwar, early morning, I took my first holy bath in the Ganges, according to the Hindus. Uh, holy bath in the Ganges is you to know all sins. So I was brought up in a Hindu religion, so I took with great faith to walk all my sins. And then to the next bus, return bus, they take from Haridwar to Rishikesh and back. But I had to take the evening train back. I don't have much time now left. So I can go to Rishikesh, just have see, seen this man and then come back. That's all my desire. So I arrived. Uh, from the, I think in May or June, I think, June 46, that's almost 20 years ago, uh, from 46, 46, uh, uh, almost uh, 21 almost, and uh, Master, I left and arrived there, she gave them the bus goes and stops just in front of the, uh, not far away from the ocean. From that onwards, the pilgrims had to all walk around this, uh, there's a hanging bridge, and across the hanging bridge, groups of Boston, they are masters defending before, and then they will be passed across, across the ferry, a free ferry is given. And the ferry comes and stops back again in front of the uh, belt where the ocean is situated. In the first time I didn't go to ocean, I could be what with the with the pilgrims, so I want to find out what it's all about. And it's on the way lot of holy men from Swami to the orange roads and bears and every part of the people you see. And then came to the ocean and then crossed the ferry. Uh, the ferry came and then came to ocean. 
Awesome that in the very first state at that time to build the wall, everything was slow and uh, the kitchen was in dialect with the stage. But uh, as I came, natural sitting, I heard him that he must be sitting on a tiger skin, you know, all the ideas I had about how a saint should look like and he will be all standing with the reverence and so forth. But I came and I saw King Kudrims and the visitors uh, came to see him and he was sitting on a, on a platform, uh, a concrete platform and the uh, rest of them, some of them standing, some of them sitting and asking several questions, just like a press conference looking right there. But when you look at him, the one thing is quite different. He is not like any other person I've ever seen in my life. I could not forget the first time I ever seen. There is nothing but a man when he smiles, the face just literally looks like a like a like a sun and his body is literally glowing. His skin skin is so soft and there is light emanating from his body all the time. That's my first experience. And I was only a small boy, there so many people there and uh, everyone was asking questions. I never even asked, dared to ask a question to such a man. So I was satisfied. I had just silently back and left the place. I didn't ask one question, I only stood for one minute there, that's all my first contact. And he didn't see me, I, did, I was far away in the crowd. I left him in back to my camp in time. When I had made leave, after some time, 20 days, 28 days, you get first time leave. The parents were by the time, but all don't know what, don't know what happened to me, and I, I didn't reach the person in that big uh, things going on at the back home. <laughs> At last, I wrote on like a three months or four months on the road where I was. <laughs> mm-hmm. By the time I already contacted my master and I knew I met him, everything all happened so fast. So now I was going back to home. So first thing I will stay two days at least in his ashram and say, learn what I can learn from him. So I want to find out more about it. So I just you know, came back in a small, um, uh, between a daughter of the Raksha, that is the coming from the Shikesh. And when I was just going to his cottage, uh, his ashram, I reckon he was pleased out coming from his uh, afternoon, I think he go to a small office there. He finished his office up and he was returning back into the, to his cottage in the dance band. And uh, there's a small group of his disciples following him as a procession. And uh, I was still egoistic and I was a young person. I don't want to go before a saint or a man uh, because I'm more educated than anyone else I knew. And um, it is a customary that we have to go before a Swami, especially a saint like Swami Sivananda, is naturally we have to go and I didn't like it. And so I just moved away from the path so that the, you know, the procession go away and I need not go and that to avoid the, the procession just starting before the same, I just moved out and took in a corner and stayed there. But as the procession came and suddenly stopped and uh, he just came to my direction and uh, he asked me, are you coming from Jalanda? I said, yes. And then he prostrated before me. I never tried to prostrate before me. He touched my feet. And we got the first lesson. The humility. Which I didn't have even still I, as very little I have. <laughs> that was my first, first lesson I ever did. And absolutely a saying that ministers, prime ministers and presidents all come to and go before him. Here is a man, absolutely a stranger, a, a stupid boy, standing with all his egoism. I think all about I knew about the world, about other things, and uh, and he just come and has to get away from his actual path and uh, 
from out from the past and to ask a question and to teach me a first lesson and that's my experience. So I learn from you. It's not like any other Swami or a saint because all of Swami will never go with another man, my God. If a Swami goes because another person finishes and spirituality has gone down, they will never go. They will always keep their head high. Always. The moment you become Swami, you are not allowed to go before anyone. That's the rule. And he is a man who broke all the rules. And not only young men, old men, children, doesn't matter anyone who frustrated before. Animals, doesn't matter what it is. So in his practical life he showed the humility. That's my first lesson. Second lesson to cut short. Uh, it's Friday evening. Because uh, they are worshipping the guys. It's a beautiful time. Everyone is enjoying. And the atmosphere is marvelous. The first time you come, everything is wonderful, you know, anywhere, any spiritual. After some time you stay, things become, you don't get the same beauty. And the first experience of marvelous. And the, the, the disciple of Sanchiyam, they came away and made a small, tiny cracker lamp, and they were floating the cracker lamp on the, on the Ganges. And uh, the worshipping the Ganges, the Friday devoted for worshipping the Ganges, a flowing river. Formerly, I'm skeptical and there, brought up in a Hindu religion, I don't care about all this kind of pictures. So I was just thinking, what kind of foolish disciples Sri Ramana is having? They don't know ABC, they don't know anything, they don't know anything about H2, or the water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. I learned all about in the school, I know everything about it. This illiterate disciple, I was just feeling myself as a superior to them. So I was just observing their whole ceremony, it is not as clear as it is secret. And suddenly, the Sivananda or the Kevin joined his disciples. And I said, what kind of man he is? He is not an ordinary man. He says, not only that, he also was a medical doctor, he was all about H2O, so if you buy here to worship a flowing river, I just I was thinking like that, and just at that moment he turned back, just a second and looked at me, I was mentally thinking, and the thought reached him, and just look at it, and look at this foolish boy. He knows everything, you know, because he knows little bit of H2O. And then there comes in my second lesson. Everything changed. The whole Ganges vanished. With the one bright light. Everything merged. Just giving one simple message. Everything is God. Even this very Ganges is God. The mighty Himalayas is God. There is nothing except light appears. So he thought, do not use your intellect, intellect to find out the truth. Truth is far beyond your understanding. You are nothing in spiritual life. You are not even a B C D. So, so he taught me second lesson. Well, that's enough for me. No more. Because I am not ready for anything else beyond that. Then I went home and then we came next year, 1947, it was done with the celebration, the war is finished and the uh, day after that I would like to continue to stay and they would make me a big officer and they would make me promotions and everything. As I finished my army life, I, I got what I want. I go back to my father sitting as a simple school teacher and became a teacher and had this uh, boys, illiterate boys in my hometown, in the village, they had an education, I think that's the best profession I thought, so I can carry on with meditation, my helping with children, and so I tried to settle in my hometown. But 47 came, and I was I had to undergo special teachers training course for this purpose. And how the invitation comes for its birthday celebration, which in the temple of your audience. And that was my last understanding. 
my early life was coming to an end. Uh, by that time, I was now almost 18 now. Mm -hmm. So they, I want to go and visit the master for his birthday and get his blessing. I've been seeing more than a year now. So I had collected enough money to just to call the people who came to get and 15 days I took off to leave and I was supposed to be back within 15 days. My mother was following to the railway, uh, to the bus station. As she was following and I go, just I go to get into the bus, I look at her and there was a message, I will never see her again back home. I said, what are you talking? I'm going to come back. I'm coming back in 50 days. But no, I won't come back. That's the message. I was terrified. I still know I cannot leave my parents. I was what happened. I was to the end. How can I go? But that was the message. I left. In fact, so many things happened on the journey which I'm going to skip off. I arrived to Shigesh. Uh, 1st September 1947, the celebration of the birthday was 8th September and uh, all many devotees are started slowly coming from all over India for the special occasion to the 60th birthday. And then um, on the evening when I was standing there and the day when it was on duty, a lot of monkeys there and they put a, a kind of blender to dry in the sun. And monkeys come and disturb and take everything away. So they ask me to rob the, they give a simple duty, everyone has a lot of certain duty. So I was just robbing the monkeys and uh, looking after this thing. Last was passing by that, and look at me, you stayed here. I said, yes, Swami, I said, so I don't know why. And then I realized the message I got when I left home, that I'm not going to come back. And the message is here now. First time, you this time you said, stay here. And that's my, how I stayed there. I was not prepared. I didn't have no intention to stay. And the life was very struggle because my parents were pulling one side and my master was pulling another side. There was struggle for about six, eight months. The time before I went on very badly, I couldn't take any more. I want to go back home, but I don't want to go back home. And parents started writing letters to come back. And so I look for them at last, I first match, I don't know what to do. So I first to please tell me you now what is my, I don't know what's my right to go and tell my parents, uh, which is our custom in India, to so parents we have to go and tell you, or I should, I should tell you. And he said one simple word. Mother and not to give an to this, neither father, neither father nor mother for you. And they accepted this word from the stage. And so went gone. And then I thought maybe now he, he suggested me to stay, so he's going to initiate me into all meditations and make me up in the spiritual height. I was imagining all those things that I heard. A lot of the spiritual experiences, meditation and all these things. But so we discover that kind of foolishness. Hard work, service is important. Next morning we have to take all the guest clothes and go and wash in the Ganges. <laughs> my God, I never even wash my own clothes in my home. <laughs> but yeah, I come from Arthur's family, I so belong to seven class, washing the clothes and the and shooting this mother and after us, hard task we never do, we never touch a boom in our life. If we do things, it comes with no dignity, the way we are taught. So all around the southern class, now here I had to go and watch other schools. And that's the way it's for the first lesson. Well, if you want to reach somewhere, be humble, forget about superiority, hard task. Everything has to disappear. Did you tell us in a week old talk how when he was standing before the untouchable and made him his first teacher? So, what he did exactly, he would repeat the same thing to all his disciples. He never gave promises, he's going to illuminate in the first year or something, initiate and take him to the higher heaven. 
Now all reality, what all, twenty four hours you do, you will keep with this thing. And then at last I become what is person, my system and so on. So many things I skip off. Then Nash Walker made me when the first university was opened in 48. First time after a year and a half actually. Uh, and he started giving teaching yoga scientifically uh, to all the people. So he put a, a four or five of his researchers and allotted one particular yoga as the chief professor. So one for Vedanta, one for Raj Yoga, one for Karna Yoga, one for Bhakti Yoga. And I was still waking only and he put me in charge of Atavara section at that time. And that's why I know the first time we start teaching the yoga uh, to the teach uh, to the uh, to other discreetly guests. So I start learning much from that onwards. I learned more yoga by teaching than by studying. There are so many things you have to learn when you teach you to learn more than anything else. Anything else. So the master used to praise me in front of the people, sometimes criticizes me, but mostly he praises. But when I go to work up to him, I was a punish too. So he used to praise me on Vishnavan with a great yogi and uh, this and that in front of the people. So he goes and says, maybe that's right, I'm a great yogi now. Get on teaching, you can get yoga, you can get up exercise. So again, you start building up. You so remove the dose and start becoming more concrete. So I thought maybe in a yogi should be buried and the flowing hairs. Uh, so I start growing buried and you get up long hair. Uh, yeah, because that you can't become a yogi, because people don't much respect you, you know, you need uh, all those external things, uh, a nice hair and a nice hair uh, flowing, a uh, majestic appearance. So I started making real yogi. Next morning, next day, two days after, when he was watching my bear growing, mm-hmm. they asked, Oh, this is coming now, you want to be a great yogi now. Very simple word. He used to tell me a day from building up. He said, I'm doing this and become servant and I start behaving like any other person there. He never allowed. That was sufficient. Immediately when he failed. Because I had to go to like an ordinary man. And that's the second. So he never allowed to build up this kind of show business, hypocrisy. But he knew just like a plain man with the humanity, he wants his disciples to offer to me with them. It's not something like a going up or seated up. And then afterwards, then I became his personal assistant and uh, several things happened from the, this very intense uh, case is one of his disciples. This story is narrated in the next story. And then I conclude that many things maybe I'll talk another day more about my father experience as I can talk full night about what happened. Uh, I'm skipping off everything and only taking some details here and there. Now the last thing um, about this experience of the Burlington, I was his personal assistant at that time, some was very lucky to have that opportunity to serve him. Um, it's not because he needed that. He gave an opportunity and many people like us to have contact with him. And so um, when you go for an evening, I take his bag, he carries a, a bag with two books and sometimes some little bit of food and some prasad he used to do. And I take a lantern, a hurricane lantern to show the light on the way because he has to climb up to the top of the mountain. And then uh, early morning when the first university just started four o'clock, he said he insisted no one should call at that time. He would go all alone. Evening and the during the day time I consulted him. And uh, so on the one evening I was going up to the the, the lantern and that evening 
not as such. Um, so that is what one uh, student came about six months ago, and uh, he had lots of mental difficulties. His wife committed suicide because he was in, that she couldn't take any more his atrocities. So he didn't have any more mental peace. He came to Austin. Everyone comes there to Austin. This not who they are. Nothing more of their question. So he said, "You can see a distant place help me." So he asked to go and see Hare Rama, stay in the temple, do some temple service. After six months, uh, he wants to go back home, and he wants money now. It's two thousand miles journey, and Austin always in difficult life here. Always uh, bets. And that's a speed more than 200 people used to keep by a farm and food in some visitors. Whether they pay or not, they all have to be fed and the person has to run. And there's no other place, uh, uh, confusion you can find like that also. There's no rules, no regulations. Anyone can come, anyone, anyone can go to Shivananda and then eat his food and then go away with all the money. Or uh, whatever he can, so the people take advantage of his heart. So he thought he was the one. Asu is really in difficult position, so he wants money to go back. That's why he wants not to go. First of all, he wants to be peace. Secondly, Asu is in difficult position. He can't afford to give him money to go home. And then he was very angry and he left and went back to his room. And that evening. <laughs> and that, uh, uh, the next day morning it happens. Uh, master never misses one morning. Always we get up at four o'clock in the morning for our meditation. Never misses one. Every morning he used to come. In the first morning he missed. He never came for the lecture or for the morning meditation. There is no why. But I was. I know if he is not going to come because I always get information, but I didn't get also. And I, he locked his door; no one can go at that time. If he is locked, he is not disturbed. And then four o'clock, he didn't come, and so in the meditation is over. We want to find out, and we were sick or something. We don't know. But at nine o'clock, as usual, he came to the office, and he didn't tell why he didn't come. Then the usual procedure in the evening. I went there after his supper. I took all his books and things and took the lantern and just started leading him back to the up the hill at the top of the mountain. You see, half the ocean is down and half the ocean is on the top. So we have to go to the top of the uh, ocean there, just like here, almost a slope. And there are small winding roads, paths uh, are there in that time. And uh, so on the day, Master said, uh, "I want to go and see Golden Temple. How do you feel?" Uh, so I don't know. Some of these not he, he, he didn't see him at all today. So please take me to this room. I want to go and see him. So he went to his, I took him to his room. And I go in and he want to go home. He just, just like a, just uh, uh, show every kind of. Uh, Sometimes when the master would just didn't answer even a word, class master collection when we came back to the hall and that he sat in a chair on the side of the window and the devotees were about thirty or forty devotees on either side and as soon as they come and uh, I read Gita and uh, with the uh, master comes and uh, we prepare already the certain program. Before the master comes, and when the Gita chapter is finished, then we put the dim light and we sit meditation. And the two minutes after that, when we put the light dim and uh, we are all in meditation, suddenly a big noise, uh, which is generally I just see master on the particular day, master was sitting there and I I got this side of the group. Um, facing the other way, and suddenly there was a big noise and crack and everything was shattering. And there were uh, the pictures on the wall all breaking down. It's a suddenly naturally the voice woke up all of them, and then I looked back on the direction, 
And that time you say, uh, any man to the dog, if something in his hand is beating on your mattress, a bare head, I don't understand who can do such a horrible thing. So anyhow, instinctively I jumped and I tried to stop and caught all of me. He was much stronger than me, but I caught all of him. And that's how the uh, uh, people were just, they were stunned, they no one moved out. But somehow or other I, it is just a, maybe God wants me that way. I got up and spoke, caught all up and I fought with him. And then only I found that he is having an axe in his hand and he was using a real axe. And the light was put and then we came to know the pool he was going the same man, just half an hour ago master visited and uh, the same man wants to kill the master. So that was the story. And in that story I heard about that he next day he then was frustrated coming back home. So after two days then uh, naturally uh, then we, I thought of uh, myself and another disciple, we thought of staying in his own putty because he is always alone there at night. Uh, many night cats would be there, they may come and we don't want his life, so we used to stay in the veranda. And I was terrified also because I'd say from that moment on, it was a tremendous fear of him. But you know, boldly I took from his strength as a god for the whole night. And then so again, 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 from those that no master used to call me and I great yogi and so forth. And too much work, there's not too much time to meditate. Most of the time we had to meditate up at 11 o'clock, 11.30. At night we sit in the dance with fans and so, uh, uh, even came I want to meditate more. Work is not important, not too much work we had, also full of work. Morning continuing, you have to work, 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 and tired of this work, and uh, do some big stuff, and uh, I must, you know, progress more spiritually, and the ocean is no good for spiritual progress, here everyone comes and mothers, the road, the field, the master is only looking after them, he won't care us, he won't care, he won't ask one question, he left us alone, so this kind of feeling came a kind of, uh, uh, bad feeling came against the master in organization. Because even though you are living in a spiritual atmosphere after some time, you don't feel the spiritual atmosphere because you are in it all the time. Just like when you are in, in the dark, uh, in, in, in a hot, uh, in a cold place, after some time you don't feel this cold compared to the heat outside. So also, you get accustomed to this spiritual vibrations you don't feel it because there's nothing to compare from the world. So uh, this came and then I ran away from from my master from the master's place. And that story I concluded and then we conclude that it's a very small, maybe short. And so I go to this up, I want to meditate more, I ran from the without telling him the small note and just leaving him. I went into the caves, wandered into the Nala, and first my cave experience, I, I, sometimes I used to go to the cave, and there's a cave, you know, far away, uh, which is about 20 miles to walking distance, um, from that I, first time, first night I arrived there, I only had enough for a few uh, bread that I took with me, and a, a mat box, but keep in light, fire in case it gets cold at night, that's all I had in my possession. And um, so this cave was very nice and attractive, there was screen coming down and the very quiet inside the I'm going to sit simply for some time here. And uh, I can probably come to the night with a walk every day, I can get some food from some villagers on the top of the mountain. So I decided to stay there. The first night experience was out of it. it was cold and chilly at night, and also the forest is not like safe like here. It's nice, wild, wild tigers and everything is in the forest, and semi forest, and forest. A really tigers and elephants and cobras, everything you see there, cheetahs and so forth. At night you can see the whole ring of everything. 
the method that I cannot come out of the area I had to measure the inside. So I brought some firewood and split and made a fire. So keep me warm and um, turn the fire burn off. And I forgot all of my chemistry and science all about my back. The soon water, the oxygen left in the soon water, all burned out. And there was nothing but milk and the um, carbon monoxide there. So I couldn't say that for the second I had to get out. Of. And outside is all the rolling. Five years ago, it was found at night. So I came out and the fear. Whole life is a meditating in heaven, living in fear. So, uh, somehow that one night, literally, I held and went back, and the clock wandered further and found the cottage, and there are few other songs holding and giving me the gangster plan. I got a old abandoned cottage and where he stayed, and I sit with there. For a month, I thought it would be that much birthday. And so, one night comes, uh, he came, saw me, and uh, uh, all the kids started breaking up, everything came and my whole cottage was almost going down. Huge big hailstones like a, a, like a, almost like a tennis ball. And, uh, I, I was just crashing out of the whole night mist. And the next morning you could see that I had, I had the many of the peacocks and other wild birds all broken their legs and the uh, the whole stone, the whole piece, the mango piece, everything was grown down. And a few months I spent there, and then I went for a few days up, further up and further up. And then, um, naturally, that for one, one year I, I really suffered a lot. Maybe that is necessary. And after purpose, they left me in that way. So, only my egoism, and to learn what spiritual life is. And the first time I was walking, I was 116 meters. I was in that way to walk to go to pilgrimage. I didn't have money. I, I took it away. I did not have money and see if I could just live without money. But I must say, <coughs> my first time I was depending upon awesome for everything. Or I got no money. My teacher left me. I left my teacher. I was completely helpless in every way. And as I was walking other side of the campus, I saw that the hot sun in the sand, somebody was lying. Very hot when you can't bear the sun at the time, and the, sun, the sand is very hot. He was lying bare on his bare body in the hot sun. And that asked me, if it's possible like this, why can't I just take a small pilgrimage because he needs the money and food? So that day we had a weekend event pilgrimage. In one year I suffered and came back and I was and I got malaria and so forth. And after one year of uh, hardship, I came back to my master. I saw him in full sense now. I never took a bed. I understood what he meant. Cave life and things will go as they often go. And we have to purify. We have to work hard. We have to do a karma. So as soon as a bed will go, things will come. So we put it there and that's who I am. That's my real journey as a story between the progress story of spiritual. And some of my, you know, his life I learned, I'll talk to you tomorrow. We are having another interview of the military functions that are waiting. So, good early days, and I just look for the things. As we have distance, and I am able to do that and look into our life. This life, and uh, you are all not the last to be somewhere other than you are related to this decision. That's all I can say tonight, and we will discuss more about this life and treatment tomorrow. Thank you all, and just one minute we have to sit silently and then we proceed to the next function. <laughs> Thank you all.
Christian that they really need that. Now, at least 20 years ago, when we were in the first year, we were hard as they have prepared. That's how the ministers were in Nassau all day. So, I'm not in everything. You know, they look at the workplace, they look at the music, they look at the bond, 